Welcome everyone to the Hatboro Horsham High School College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event today. We have some fantastic schools here to give you a lot of great information. My name is Greg and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. Remember that your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button that you have at the bottom of your screen, that black button, to ask a question at any time. It'll be up to our panelists whether they wanna answer those questions as they're asked or go over them at the end of their presentations. As a reminder, this is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and it'll be available at strivescan.com slash Hatboro-Horsham. And I dropped that address into the chat that you can see there as well. All right, without further ado, let's turn it over to our presenters. Our first presenter is American College Dublin. Hello everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Oh. Okay. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sarah Healy and I am the admissions counselor from American College Dublin. Um, funny enough, I'm actually based right, to, right outside of Philadelphia um, in like 15 minutes from Hapro Horsham. So I'm definitely familiar with this area. So if you need anything, I'm here to help and I will drop my contact information in the chat. Um, so I'd love to start off my presentation with this picture because I think it gives a really good representation of Dublin, um, Dublin as a city as a whole. Um, so as you can see, there's lots of restaurants, stores, pubs, libraries, um, a lot of different things throughout the city to discover. It is an extremely friendly city um, located in Ireland. Um, it definitely has that intimate feel, but it's also quite metropolitan. So it has that really um, great balance. If you bring your attention to the back of the photo, you will see St. Anne's Church. And that is where we host our formal graduation ceremonies. So there's something for you to look forward to a little further down the road. So we are an Irish American university, which means that we are duly accredited um, from the Quality and Qualifications Ireland and the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. So this really um, means a few things for you as a student. One, is that your um, degree will carry that much further. Um, so it'll be recognized throughout Europe and globally, um, whereas the accreditation from the US, you know, is more recognized there. So thinking post-grad, you know, potential employers can see that um, and just be impressed that you chose the option to study um, outside of the US. And the other thing is that it gives you as a student more um, agency to decide how you kind of want to take your undergrad path. So through the Irish accreditation, you, you your undergrad path will be three years and you will just be taking classes um, under the degree that you have directly applied for. And then through the Middle States accreditation, you will be taking um, that four year undergrad track uh, where you also take, you know, some, some of the general courses that are the degree that you chose yourself. Um, so we are a very small school, which means that our lectures are typically less than 20 students. Um, but we love this because it really allows for an interactive experience within the classroom. Um, it's definitely filled with a lot of discussion and debate. You enter the classroom, um, you know, with your own perspective, and you know that you are in um, a class of people that are willing um, and excited to hear that perspective um, and have those conversations with you. So Dublin is your campus and we really encourage our students to take advantage of it. We are located right in Dublin city center. So, you know, you're right in the thick of things. Um, you can easily walk to any part of the city that you choose. Um, we really want our students to take advantage of our location um, and being able to have those, you know, aha moments of learning about something in the classroom and then seeing it um, in real life outside of the classroom. There are so many opportunities in the city. Um, a lot of big companies have offices 
like a 10 minute walk from our campus, including Google, Apple, LinkedIn, Twitter, just to name a few. Um, so there is definitely a lot happening in the city um, and a lot for you to take advantage of. I quickly want to talk about our administration. Like, I'm fine. I operate under an open door policy. So our students are encouraged to drop by and get to know the staff. Uh, we want to accommodate our students as best as possible. And to do so, um, we really need to have those open um, relationships with our students um, so we know exactly what they need. So these are the programs that we offer, that three-year bachelor's track in international business and liberal arts, and then the four-year bachelor's in international business, hospitality management, event management, liberal arts. And then we also have our four-year BFAs in musical theater performance and creative writing. So though we are a small school, we definitely welcome applicants from every corner of the globe. Um, and because of that, our requirements are aimed at gathering more of a holistic view of the applicant. We really want to get to know who you are, um, what you're interested in, what your passions are. So because of this, what's required is a minimum 2.0 GPA um, and then a personal statement that describes why you would like to study your chosen area at ACD. So this is your opportunity to really paint a vibrant picture of yourself, who you are as a person and a student. Um, this is our opportunity in the admissions office to get to know you and make sure that we're a good fit for you um, and you're a good fit for us. We have been test optional and we will continue to be so. Um, so if you wanna submit your test scores, if you think that better rounds out who you are as a student, great. But again, you are not required to submit them. Um, our tuition and fees is 9,000 euro. Um, and then our BFA is a little more just because there's different locations. You have classes and some more materials. We do operate um, on a rolling admission basis. So as you apply, we will have an answer for you within two weeks. And I will drop the application link in the chat below. It's just right on our website. Um, again, my name is Sarah Healy. I am the admissions counselor from the American College Dublin, and I will put all of my contact information in the chat below. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, American College Dublin. We're going to now pass it off to the American University of Paris. Hi, everyone. All right, I'll share my screen. So I'm Amanda, I'm an assistant director of admissions at the American University of Paris. Um, I work with all students from Canada as well as the northeastern part of the US, including Pennsylvania. So I am your direct admissions counselor and will also drop my contact information in the chat. In, um, so basic facts about American University of Paris. Um, we are a small um, liberal arts university that happens to be located in the heart of Paris. Um, all classes are taught in English, um, and our um, we are accredited in the United States. So um, you will graduate with a U.S. degree, um, and the application process is pretty similar to most U.S.-based schools, which I will go over at the end of this presentation. Um, our student body is comprised of about 1,115 students, 1,000 of which are undergrad students, and 115 are graduate-level students. Of our small student body, we have 103 different nationalities represented. Um, 65 different languages are spoken on campus and over 60% of our students actually speak more than one language. And 23% of our students have multiple passports. Um, our faculty is also diverse with 21 nationalities different uh, being represented and 68% um, of our faculty speak three or more languages. Our student to faculty ratio is eight to one with the average class size being about 12 to 15 students. So our classes are discussion based, um, smaller classroom setting. So every voice is heard and valued in the classroom um, and everyone's different um, perspectives and everything like that um, play an important role in your learning um, as a student and also as a global citizen. So for our academic areas, we have um, a few major um, departments on campus. We have about 26 different majors and 39 minors. Arts and communications majors um, are as follows, um, as well as our economics and management majors. International business administration is actually one of our most popular majors on campus. 
computer and psychology majors, um, even though a lot of these programs are very similar to what you might see in the US, our programs all take an international spin to them, especially being a discussion-based classroom with students that are coming from truly everywhere. Um, so these programs are definitely different in that sense as well. We also have environmental science majors and quantitative environmental science majors um, that actually have a partnership with the United Nations Environmental Program that students get involved with as well. And then lastly, we have history and politics majors. Our three most popular majors on campus are global communications, international business administration, and international and comparative politics. Uh, but art history, environmental studies, and environmental science, um, and our psychology majors are definitely on the rise as well. Being a liberal arts institution, you do not have to declare your major though until the end of your second year. So you just apply to AUP and then you go through a year and a half of school, either kind of honing in on what you want to study or kind of diving right in if you do know what you want to study as an applicant. We have students that actively get involved with internships as well being where we are. So this kind of highlights some of our internships that students get um, involved with. Um, all internships in France are paid, so it's definitely um, an, an opportunity that students um, are encouraged to partake in. Um, as you can see, students have worked with BBC, the UN Environmental Program, Human Rights Watch, um, Vogue, and um, the U.S. Embassy in France as a few examples of recent ones. Our campus is located in the heart of Paris, so all of those buildings are labeled below. We're kind of spread out over two blocks. Some of the buildings connect by a sidewalk, um, but it's definitely kind of that mix of a small campus and also urban campus feel. We're in the seventh arrondissement, which is where the Eiffel Tower is located, and we're also right on the Seine. So definitely a very scenic part of Paris and definitely at the heart of it all. Um, we want you to use Paris as part of your learning as well. So getting involved in those internships, taking you know immersive trips with your class um, for the day, um, just kind of really using those conversations in the cafe or even your commute to campus as part of your learning as a student and also as a person. Housing is provided for your first year through AUP fully furnished. Um, our campus is just turning 60 years old this year. So definitely um, newer buildings and more uh, modern apartment styles. And then after that, you're kind of free to choose where you would like to live with the, in the city of Paris and we'll work with you to find the best accommodation. Even though you might be attending school abroad, a lot of our students want to study abroad as well or do a summer immersive experience and kind of take advantage of being close to a bunch of um, different cultures and countries in Europe. So we also host cultural programs for our students. In regards to the application process, um, very similar to most US schools in the sense that we're on the common application. Um, we have been test optional since before the pandemic, and we always plan to be test optional. So if you are proud of your scores, by all means, send them in. Our average SAT is a 1265, and our average ACT is a 30, um, but you are not required to. Um, and we also require all of the transcripts, letters of rec, a supplemental essay to AUP on top of your common app personal statement. We also offer merit-based aid and financial aid through the FAFSA. Um, and yeah, that's offered every year that you'll work with us on. And then uh, as far as your timeline for applying, if you are applying next fall, we are a little different in that we work, our admissions office works with you longer in the sense that we're gonna be working with you in the summer to get your French visa, to sign up for classes, to make sure your plane tickets are booked, pretty much everything before you step foot on campus. So if you are applying, I will be working with you until August when you do step on campus. And our first deadline is November 15th, but our priority deadline is February 1st. And that is all. So if you would like to find your admissions counselor, which is me, um, I'll drop my contact information in the chat. Um, but you can also follow us on Instagram at AUP Admissions. Thank you. Thank you. Let's turn it over now to Cardiff University. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so my name is Rachel and I'm an international officer at Cardiff University, which is in Wales in the UK. So Cardiff University is a pretty traditional UK institution. We were established in 1883 and we combine that kind of prestigious heritage with really impressive modern facilities as well. Uh, we're one of the largest universities in the UK, so we have around 33,000 students and within that about 8,500 are international from over 130 different countries. 
We have a huge range of courses and programmes on offer. We are split into three colleges, so the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, the College of Physical Sciences and Engineering and the College of Biomedical and Life Sciences. And within that, there's 24 different academic schools and over 300 different degree programmes. So kind of something for everybody, no matter what your interests are. We're also particularly well known for our research. So we're a member of the UK's Russell Group. So if you're not familiar, these are the 24 leading research intensive universities in the UK. So it's a sign of quality and also that you're going to be taught by academics who are really kind of cutting edge in their fields. We're also ranked 159th in the world, according to the 2020 QS World Rankings, and we have great graduate prospects as well. So 97% of graduates are in employment or further study, or perhaps looking at starting a new job or course or doing other activities such as traveling um, within a short time of graduating. Cardiff has some excellent facilities. So we are, as a big, as a big university, we are really well um, kind of kitted out in terms of libraries, IT suites, and we have a brand new centre for student life, which is in this picture here, which is right in the heart of the university. So the university is kind of a cross between a city and a campus university. Everything's very close together, easy walking distance, um, but strictly speaking, it's not a campus. But this new building is right in the heart of everything. And it's a real testament to the university's focus on student facilities and student support. So all of our student support services are, are based in this building now, as well as our students union, which is consistently ranked one of the best in the UK. So students union is somewhere you'll spend a lot of time if you're looking at maybe playing a sport or taking up uh, a new hobby or looking to continue one and that you already have, uh, but it is consistently ranked one of the best. We've also put a lot of investment into the new Cardiff Innovation Campus as well. So this is going to be the world's first social sciences research park. So also something that we're really proud of and is a new, um, a new focus for the university. So one of the best things about studying at Cardiff University is our location. So we're based right in the heart of Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales. Um, hopefully you can see on this map here where we are. Um, we're about two hours west of London by train. Um, but we are a capital city in our own right, just much smaller. So the population is about 350,000, but even though it is small, it's a very diverse but multicultural city. So there's about 94 languages spoken in Cardiff. It's also a very small and friendly population. It's about 20% students because there are three uh, universities in the area. And it's one of the safest cities in the UK as well. Um, on top of that, even though it's a capital, so you get all the facilities of a capital city, it's one of the most affordable student cities in the UK. So it's currently second lowest in terms of the average rent for students. Um, so you get a lot more for your money in Cardiff than you might in a lot of other cities in the UK as well. It's also a really green city. So we have about 330 parks and gardens. So this picture in the right on the right hand corner here is Butte Park, which is a park that stretches right from the heart of the city centre all the way to the suburbs. And you can see Cardiff Castle just poking out of the trees there. So that's a 2000 year old castle, which is again, right in the heart of the city and is a really cool place to explore. Um, but there are more castles per square mile in Wales than anywhere else in the world. So we're definitely uh, very, um, a good place to visit if you're interested in history. We're also great for shopping. So this picture here on the left is of one of our Victorian and Edwardian shopping arcades. So they're full of um, independent shops, restaurants, cafes, and a really interesting place to explore if you're looking to kind of um, go shopping or maybe just try out some of the cool cafes that we have. We have lots of sports and music venues as well, and you have easy access to national parks, beaches, woodland, um, a huge amount of natural beauty that Wales has to offer. As you probably saw on the map, um, Wales is mostly bordered by water, so we do have some of the world's best beaches as well. Um, and contrary to popular belief, it doesn't always rain, so there are plenty of opportunities to explore the beaches too. So just a couple of bits of key information here. So in terms of entry requirements, we are looking for three AP tests, um, but we can accept honours dual enrolment at AP classes in lieu of up to two tests. So if you're looking at a programme that has a subject specific requirement, perhaps something like engineering, where you would need a maths um, requirement, then that would need to be a test typically. But apart from that, we can be more flexible in terms of accepting classes. We also are um, accepting applications through UCAS. I haven't put this up on the screen here, but we are. Uh, that's how we consider our applications. So that's how you would apply. We do have international scholarships and we also accept FAFSA loans. So a lot of our US students will use those as a way to pay for their tuition. And in terms of fees, you're looking at around 24,000 for humanities programs to around $32,000 for things like clinical kind of science programs. 
We guarantee accommodation for international students for every year. So that's quite unusual for a UK university. A lot of students will choose that in their first year and then look at private accommodation in the second and third years. Um, but you have that backup option for your full degree. Degrees are typically three years in length. This is true for Wales, Northern Ireland and England. Uh, and this is because you choose your major at the time you apply. So you are more specialised and more focused. So if you know what you want to study, studying in the UK is a really good option. But you can make your course longer by including things like placement years, study abroad or integrated masters. Um, put some popular subjects up here, so journalism, politics, international relations. Um, but you can also study a language um, regardless of your degree as well. And if you do have any questions, my email address is up on the screen here, but I'll be sure to put it in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move over to Quest University Canada. Oh, you're muted. Here we go. Sorry, that took me a moment. So I'm going to be talking a bit about Quest University. I am the admissions counselor for the, U for the Eastern US and Eastern Canada, and also an alumni. When I was in your position a couple of years ago, I couldn't figure out where, what to do. And I did a lot of research, as I'm sure you're all doing, and found that Quest offered something that I didn't find anywhere else. And it really motivated me to come go through the program. And that's why I'm here now, because I really believe in what Quest has to offer. Quest is unique and completely different from conventional universities. You've probably done a lot of research and know what to expect from a school, but I'm here to say, let's open, your, open our minds and see what else can happen when we add innovation to education. At Quest, you won't have a sim schedule that's similar to high school. You won't be having to take English and math and science and figure out what homework is the most important at any given time. In fact, we're, we work on the block plan. So that's one class per month, one subject, and that's all you're going to be doing for three and a half weeks. So with that, you really dive into what you're learning about. You really get immersed in that experience. And so what does that look like? Well, here we are. You'll have one class every day for three and a half weeks instead of having a bits and pieces all over the place. We also don't have big classes. A lot of time in your undergrad education, you'll have over hundred people in your first two years. All of our classes are capped at 20 students and are sometimes even smaller. We engage in deep discussions daily. What does that look like? Well, you'll, all of your classes will be seated around a, a large table discussing your professor who has a PhD, we don't use TAs, will be sitting at that table with you and learning together. When I say there's 20 students, there's really 21 because everyone has something to bring and something to learn. We won't be sitting in that class for three hours though. You'll also have breakout sessions. That's where you get to go into small rooms of four to five students and discuss your readings, class activities, really get to practice ideas, practice presentations, and then come back to class and present it. After those three hours of class, the day is yours. What can you do? Well, you can go and read at a coffee shop, Find a balcony overlooking the ocean. You have so many options. Also at Quest, you don't need to pick a major. In fact, you never pick a major. We offer one degree and that's the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. What that means is that you only have four required courses for your entire degree. So you don't need to worry about taking classes that fit your particular major. You have total freedom. And that lets you integrate your passions and interests with knowledge. You get to learn about the things that you are interested in. In your first two years, you'll be taking classes in all different disciplines. You'll take some life science, some math, some physics, and socials and humanities. And everyone comes and brought, gets brought to the same playing field. With that, you also get to be creative in how you take those classes. So for example, in an evolution class, you'll learn about the biological mechanisms, but then how can you apply those to cities? How can you apply them to storytelling, to designing a hockey helmet? We look at every issue interdisciplinarily. Your first two years conclude with a question, which is a specialization that you create. In the history of Quest, no two questions have been the same. You can ask about what dictates morality within law. My question was about using storytelling to teach STEM classes. 
Every question is unique and based on what you're interested in. That question will guide your concentration years, the last two years of your program, where you're gonna get to choose, sorry, where you get to choose what classes will help you answer that question. You have an internship opportunity, which we call experiential learning and electives, so that if there are things slightly outside of the scope of your question, you can still learn about them. That all concludes in the Keystone Project, which is often compared to a master's level thesis. That can be a paper, a big research project, or it can be something else like an artistic portfolio, a dance piece of dance choreography. Students in the past have even turned buses into tiny homes and have built gardens on campus. You get to learn in one of the most beautiful places in Canada. Squamish is halfway between Vancouver and Whistler, and it's considered the outdoor capital of Canada. Students will be sprawled on the grass studying. All of our students also live on campus, which creates a very tight knit community. Within that, you're going to get to know pretty much everyone as the school is and has a maximum of just 700 students. Students also can leave campus. You can get a job off campus working at a local cafe or for a kayak tour, as a kayak tour guide. There are endless options. A few more photos, and again, there's always these beautiful mountains in their background. This is our library building, floor to ceiling windows to take advantage of, of as much natural light as possible. And the cafeteria where, again, you get this great view, but you can also study and work with friends as everyone will be on a meal plan and eating, learning, living, exploring together. Between, in our three and a half weeks, you'll end up with, a, because we all work on three and a half weeks, you'll end up with a four day weekend every single month. And in that time, you can explore Squamish. We have amazing hikes. We have world-class mountain biking and rock climbing. We're also just under an hour away to, from Vancouver, a major urban center with all of, the, all of the classic city commodities, as well as just half an hour away from Whistler if you speed, probably 40 minutes if you don't. And that is one of the best resort skiing locations in the world. Our alumni have gone to work for very reputable businesses, but also have gone to grad school at some of the best universities in the world. We also finally have the LEAP program, which is for leaders in elite athletics and performers, performance. So that's if you're an athlete, a sponsored athlete, if you compete um, at the state or national level, if you go on tour with a band, it is ideal for us, for our students, because you have the flexibility of the block plan. So you can take a block off. So for example, students who are big skiers will be in school September, October, and then take November through March off and come back for April, May, June so they can curate their own degree. We don't ask you to choose between your passion and your education. We let you balance them. Our tuition is just, is 3,500 for US or international students, but that works down to about 2,800 US. Um, same with, and when you factor in everything, dorms, meal plan, books, your travel, we include like stipends for traveling, your flights, but not, it comes to just 40,000 US dollars, which, Compared to our closest university in the US, which would be Colorado College, you get a huge discount for one being American, but also um, with our rates. 85% of students receive financial aid and there are a lot of merit-based scholarships available. So finally, Quest is known for its block plan, small classes, the question keystone, that we offer just one degree and it's one of the most beautiful campuses and you can study outside of the classroom and even abroad. So please ask questions if you want to know about that. For more information, take a picture of this QR code and apply, or you can email me. You have my email there as well as my personal phone number. Thanks. Thank you, Quest University Canada. We'll now like to turn over to Middlesex University, London. Thank you. So hi, my name is Gabriella and I'm the Americas and Caribbean uh, Regional Officer at Middlesex University London. I'm based in New York and I help students and families navigate the application process. I was also a student at Middlesex University and I am naturally and very genuinely a very big advocate of British education. All right, let's get started. So Middlesex is a British university located in Northwest London, which is about 20 minutes into central London by two. It is located in an area, the neighborhood is called Hendon, which is residential, 
Um, it's quite suburban. In my opinion, it's the best of both worlds because you are doorsteps from central London where you can spend a good portion of your time. Yet it's in an area where accommodation is a little bit more affordable. Um, it has a big campus, it has green areas and sports facilities that sometimes um, uh, in the middle of the city you can't really get. Um, I constantly remind students that London has a place for everyone. There is a great wealth of cultural opportunities like museums, which by the way, have free entrance, many of them do. Um, West End Theater, my very personal favorite, uh, but there are also libraries, parks, um, and just a, a very a wealth of opportunities. But not only that, London is also a very vibrant city with impressive nightlife, uh, world-renowned restaurants, architecture, and a perfect combination of past, present, and future. London is also the hub of uh, arts, culture, business with countless global businesses. More than half of Fortune 500 companies are based there. Um, and that's not to mention the groundbreaking research that many London-based universities are doing there, um, which Middlesex is part of. Um, by the way, the bottom left image is a photo of Camden Market, which is just about 15 minutes south of the university by two. Um, so we have three academic schools that teach over 300 industry relevant programs. The faculties are art and design, um, or sorry, art and creative industries. I always call it art and design. It's art and creative industries. Um, then there is professional and social sciences. And finally, the faculty of science and technology with all of the STEM programs. All of our programs are taught practically with employment in mind. They are internationally recognized, which is probably most important for you. Um, they do not include any general education modules, which is why higher education in the UK is more specialized and major focused, um, as my colleague from Art have mentioned. Um, for all of these reasons, over 90% of our graduates are employed or pursuing higher education only six months after they finish their program successfully. So in terms of entry requirements, these are the typical entry requirements for year one. For those of you who haven't been able to take standardized tests, don't worry, we're assessing those on a case by case basis. Um, but apart from a GPA of above 3.0 and ACTs, SATs, or APs, if you're um, studying art and design or performing arts, then you will additionally require a portfolio, an audition, or an interview. Um, be mindful that many STEM programs will require um, two AP exams in the area of your major. But if you fail to meet this criteria, you can be admitted for an integrated foundation year, which is a year zero. And what that does is it prepares you to successfully start year one. So you'll still be in a university for a maximum of four years um, instead of three, but you will still have access to this higher education in the UK, which is very well ranked. Um, you apply via UCAS. Application is on UCAS.com or not on the Common App. Only about a handful of British universities are in the Common App, but all of them are on UCAS, which is Universities and Colleges Application Service. Um, so the tuition fees in the UK are generally lower than US private and out of state options. For Middlesex University, right now, tuition fee is £14,000 per year which is about 18 and a half thousand US dollars for the 2021-22 academic year. Um, and that is lower than many US private and out of state options. So um, for those of you who are studying for three years instead of four, that's a significant reduction already in comparison to US tuition fees. Um, scholarships require a separate application form after receiving an offer. And the maximum is of £5,000 towards the deduction of your first year only tuition fee. Um, and we also administer USDE and private US loans. So an education in the UK can be very, very affordable because students can also work while they study. Um, so it's definitely something that I would advise. Middlesex has great student support from the moment, well, even before you apply. Um, all the way through the student stage in all three years and beyond. We give students support in areas like academics, mental health, well-being, welfare, and a number of other areas. We also have clubs and societies um, that students can join to make their student experience far greater. Graduates can also benefit from a strong alumni network and a lifelong employability service. So I, for example, have 
I graduated a while ago, but I can still come. They can, the Employability Center can check my CV, do mock interviews and keep me on the loop of the industry. So that's a great lifelong service that we give our students. Um, these are some photos of our halls of residence, which are nothing like a dorm. Each bedroom has a private bathroom, a shared living room and kitchen. They include all bills, a weekly cleaner for the shared living spaces and have very good links to central London and of course to the university. So please stay in touch with me. Um, you can scan the QR code and fill out that contact form. You can email me and I'll be happy to help you going forward. I'll also leave my contact details on the chat. But just as a light, last minute highlight, um, if you know what you want to study and you would like to have practical teaching with an 18 to 1 teacher-student ratio, affordable tuition fees, and you want to live in one of the most vibrant cities in the world, you should definitely consider applying to Middlesex University London. Thank you. Thank you, Middlesex University. And now we'll turn it over to our last university, King's College London. Thank you, Greg. Uh, bear with me whilst I just share my screen. Okay, so my name is Rory Robinson. I'm the Student Recruitment Manager for the Americas at King's. Over the next few minutes, I'll just take you uh, a brief overview of what it's like to study at King's College London. So one of the oldest universities in the UK, founded in 1829, but today we rank really highly with 35th in the world, 7th in the UK, and 3rd in London. So it's great for our students when they graduate. We're quite a large university in terms of the student body, um, in terms of UK university size, comparing it to a big state university in the US is probably still quite small. Um, over 33,000 students, just under half of those students are from outside of the UK, coming from around 150 different countries. So. The student body uh, at King's is very diverse, a big melting pot of different cultures, which makes it an exciting place to live and study. And it really re reflects um, London's diversity as well. We have one of the largest cohorts of um, US students um, at any UK university with over 1,200 studying at various different levels um, at King's. So you, yes, you'll be studying abroad, but you've got that familiar community um, surrounding you uh, in, in central London with your fellow US students. Um, just, so this is a snapshot of um, central London. Um, our campuses are in red and a few London landmarks you may recognize uh, in purple. We have a number of campuses across the city, but if you visited London before, it's very easy to get around and, and it's very much a walk-in city, even though we have great transport system like the Tube and trains and buses and so on. So we have two main uh, campuses for our undergraduates. Number one on the left there is our Strand Campus um, near Covent Garden, the West End Theatre District. Um, if you've visited before, you may recognize that area. That's home to our students studying the likes of social sciences, arts, humanities, natural mathematical sciences. And then our campus number 16 is near Tower Bridge. That is home to students studying biological sciences, uh, undergraduate psychology, uh, and further allied health courses. So those are the two main campuses there. Um, we're very much an urban city campus, as you can see, um, but we do have great accommodation available for students on campus or within a short walking distance away. So it's very convenient for you to get around. And the last time uh, cities were ranked for, for their students, London came out on the top. Um, so it's certainly a great place for you to live and, and study for the next couple of years of your life. And student life in London is super fun. We have an amazing uh, Canadian American society. So um, it's a great way of, uh, of you getting together and celebrating the holidays. And um, I know uh, Thanksgiving can be the first holiday um, away from home for many students. So um, it's a nice way to get together and, and celebrate those. Huge array of activity groups and sports clubs, around 300 in total. So students love to get involved in those. Of course, coming to London, students enjoy exploring the city, but also using it as a springboard to explore the rest of Europe. Um, also, if you are missing uh, home a, a little bit, you can always watch the NFL. I know it's the Atlanta Falcons um, against the New York Jets, I believe, on Sunday here in London. So, um, yeah, if you are missing home and you want a taste of the, the, the sport and um, theatre like that, then certainly you can 
get involved uh, and do those things in London. But there's a huge array of museums and galleries too, uh, to really enjoy yourselves around your studies. And just highlighting what you can study, we have just under 200 undergraduate courses, mainly three years in duration. So it enables you to deep dive right from day one into your chosen subject and be, become a specialist um, in that chosen area. Just focusing on the, the areas that are most popular with our US students is social sciences, um, such as politics, international relations and war studies. Um, also arts and humanities, we, we offer liberal arts too, as well as languages, classics and so forth. Um, so these are um, three year courses, as I mentioned, but again, enables you to become experts in those areas. In terms of the entry requirements, we look for three APs uh, in combination with an SAT1 or ACT, or you can submit five APs. Uh, we are a little more flexible given what's happened over the past 18 months, um, but there is an expectation for students to meet those entry requirements. In terms of our tuition fees, they are competitive, especially with the rest of the UK. Um, and in, in comparison to maybe the private uh, providers or private um, universities in the US or out of state tuition fees um, is pretty good in that sense. And a lot of students use the FAFSA loan system to help fund their studies and you can find the code there. Um, and finally, just before I wrap up, we have a number of US students in your shoes before considering studying outside of the US. So why don't you get in touch with them who've gone um, and made the jump across the Atlantic to enroll in London. And I think it would be great for you guys just to reach out to them through our Unibuddy system on our website, um, which will enable you just to really find out what it was like, whether it be the application process or living in London, just to get a better taste of what university life is like in London. You never know, you may be following in their footsteps uh, very soon. So you please feel free to contact me. My email's there. Also put in the chat if you've got any questions. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you, everyone, for a great session. I have just one more slide that I wanted to share. When you click off, you will get a link to a quick study, a quick survey. It's five questions. If you answer those surveys, we certainly appreciate it. Remember, you can sign up for more sessions at strivescan.com. And a recording of this will be available at strivescan.com backslash Hartborough, Hatborough, excuse me, slash Horsham. Thanks for everyone for a great session and have a wonderful day wherever you may be. Thank you.